Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to combine several ideas that we just covered in previous lessons in order to create what I call a poor man's hamburger navigation layout. Now, why am I calling it a poor man's version? Uh, because I'm trying to give you the simplest, cleanest, clearest path so that you can implement hamburger navigation right away in your Windows 10 apps. Now there is a, a rich man's version of this detailed at Jerry Nixon's blog uh, here at the shortcut on screen. And uh, like I said, Jerry Nixon uh, works for Microsoft. He's done an awesome job uh, with uh, this particular article. Let me pull it up here. Implementing an awesome hamburger button with XAML's new split view control. And the reason why I would call it a rich man's version is because it's more robust, includes a bunch of more features, but it's also a bit more complex if you are indeed an absolute beginner. So uh, just keep that in mind, and you might want to visit it and bookmark it for later. Maybe uh, after we go through several more lessons, uh, you'll be able to use his version instead of mine. What I want to do now is to recreate the hamburger layout. Uh, that we saw in the money app. So when I click the little hamburger icon at the top, the split view opens up. When I click it again, it closes and all we can see is the icons. Furthermore, whatever we currently select, you can see that one of the, uh, the secondary colors, in this case a darker green color, uh, highlights the fact that we're no longer in uh, we're no longer on the home tab, but rather we're on what I guess is the watch list. Okay. And uh, we're not going to implement any of these other pieces of the puzzle. Uh, we've already talked about many of them, and I'm going to let you do that whenever we get to our next challenge. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, go through this lesson is because we're going to use the hamburger navigation layout in several of the apps that we're going to build together later in the series, but we're also going to use it in an upcoming challenge, uh, what I'm going to call the Hamburger Heaven Challenge, uh, that will allow you to kind of implement the full... Uh, the bar at the top of the search and the back arrow as well as the hamburger down the down the side. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I've created a new uh, project called Hamburger Example. You can see here, all I've done is just open up the app.xaml.cs and I remove the uh, frame counter. Let's open up the main page.xaml and begin working together. I'm going to get rid of the designer view again just because at this point it's in the way. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a couple of row definitions. So grid.row definitions and we're going to create uh, two row definitions this time and so we're going to set the height equal to auto on the first one and then uh, we'll set the height equal to star on the second one okay all right the next thing we're going to do is create a, uh, a relative panel and I'm going to set that into uh, Grid dot row equals zero, so I'm not even going to put that on there. Honestly, I'll just leave it off. Uh, and then inside of that, we're going to put a button. We'll come back to that in a moment. But that'll be our hamburger button. Beneath that, what I want to do is add a split view. And here we're going to add this into the grid dot uh, row equals one, so that second row that takes up the star size. And this is where we're going to do the majority of our work. Uh, and inside of the split view, like we talked about in the previous lesson, I'm going to use a list box control for all the reasons I talked about in that previous lesson. So you'll see it all come together here in just a moment. And the list box is going to require us to create a number of list box items. So I know we're going to have several of those as well. I'll just copy and paste a couple here like this. So that's our general layout of what we're going to do in this lesson. Now we just have to fill in the details. Hopefully up to this point it makes sense. The list box will sit inside of the split view. The list, each list box item will have an icon on the left and then text on the right. As you select an item from the list box, we're going to handle the, uh, the click event or the selection changed event. And I don't know if we're going to do anything with it. I just want to show you how we would actually uh, use that. All right, so let's start here with the button control. And the first thing I want to do is give it a name. So we're going to name it uh, Hamburger Button. And then what I want to do is uh, choose a 
icon that represents the hamburger. You'll recall that it is a uh, it has three vertical lines stacked above each other. And to do that, we're going to find that there's a specific font family available on Windows 10 devices called Sago MDL2 Assets. So what I'm going to do is open up the Character Map application. You can get to this by going to uh, to your Cortana search bar. Uh, in your taskbar on the desktop and just typing in character map and that should find it. And what you can do is like scroll all the way through all of these graphic assets for this specific font, so go MDL2 assets. And I happen to know where this one is at, uh, where the hamburger icon is. And I just got to find it again here. So bear with me one second here. Obviously with so many to choose from, it's easy to lose track. All right, there I go. It's right here. And you can see that the most important part of this uh, is what you see down here in this little status bar. You see a capital U plus E700, and then it's marked for private use. We don't care anything about that. The only thing that's important to us is the E700 part. Okay? So let's do this. Let's set the font family to Sago MDL2 assets. And then we're going to choose to set the content property equal to the E700. And I'm going to put something before and after that E700. I'm going to uh, suffix it with a closing uh, semicolon. And then prior to that, I'm going to add an ampersand, a pound sign, and an X. All right. Now I'm also going to set the the font size large so we can actually see it. You probably wouldn't set it to 36 in a real application. Uh, you just have to kind of test it and see what what works for you. And um, I think that's pretty much it. I think we're going to add the click event handler for it to open and close it. So we'll get back to that in just a moment. All right, so now let's take a look at what it looks like in the designer. All right, and let's blow this up a little bit so we can actually see what we're looking at. All right, you can see we've got our button with an icon on it. Awesome. And we could style up that button to be uh, one of the primary colors for our apps. I'm just not going to do that in this particular example. Okay, so we have our button. And now let's move on to the split view itself. I'm going to give it a name because we're going to need to reference it programmatically. So a name equals my split view. All right. And here we're going to uh, set the, the display mode equal to compact overlay. So what I want is for it to show icons. And then when it comes out, I want it to overlay any of the content that's underneath of it. Okay. So that's why I'm choosing that display mode. Uh, when the pane is open, I'm going to set its width to 200. And when it's closed, I'm going to be around this, this size. I may adjust it a little bit, but I'm going to set the compact panel length equal to about 56. Uh, when I was, uh, when I was uh, getting ready for this, 56 seemed right, but we can monkey with that a little bit later. Uh, also, I want the horizontal alignment equal to left on this. And there might be some other settings that we'll want uh, as we test this and play around with it. Go ahead and put all these on separate lines. All right, next up is the list box. And this is where we're going to uh, actually display items. So let's go selection mode equals single. We only want to select one at a time, not multiples. That wouldn't make sense in this context. And uh, when the selection changes, I'm going to give it a name too. So let's give it um, uh, name equals um, icons list box, something like that. And then we're going to go ahead and set the uh, selection changed equal to a new event. All right, we'll come back to that later. All right, and then we're going to set for each of the text box items, we're going to do something like this. We're going to open it up, and we're going to need to add a stack panel. And we want what comes next to be oriented horizontally. 
Then I'm going to put a text block, and this first text block will be the icon, and the second text block will be the actual text. So where will we get the icon from? Well, once again, we're going to go to the font family equals uh, sago MDL to assets, and then we'll set the uh, font size equal to 36. And then finally, we're going to set the text equal to. Now let's find another icon we want to use with a character map. We can choose any of these. For this example, uh, you'll just have to hunt through and find something that you're looking for. Let me choose something uh, relatively simple like this little share button that we would see uh, all over Windows 10, especially on uh, the Edge browser. So I'm going to select that, and it's E72D. All right, E72D. E72D. And I'm going to put a semicolon after it. I'll put an ampersand, pound sign, lowercase x above it, like so. And I just realized my mistake here. Font size equals 36. Great. All right, then next up, I want to put the text that comes next to it, right? So uh, we'll put the text here equal to um, first option. Very generic. You could come up with something better than that. How about I just rename that to share? Maybe that'd be better. We'll set its font size equal to 36. And we'll see what that looks like. We may have to come back and adjust that. All right, so we're going to do the same thing for the other list box items. In fact, we'll just create two. Let's open up our character map and find another icon we want to use. I'll go ahead and use this star. Anything that you find is fine in this case. E734. E734. Semicolon after it. Ampersand pound X before it. And then let's set the font family. Let's go. MDL to assets, and then finally the font size will be 36. And then I'll just put here uh, text equals favorites, and we'll put its font size equal to 36 as well. All right, so I think I have enough here to work with. The one thing I will want to do though is uh, whenever the selection changes, well, actually, let's let's back up to the hamburger. Whenever somebody clicks the hamburger, remember what we want to do. Uh, we want to show or hide the split view. So let's go and select F12 on our keyboard. So we're here in the code behind, and what I want to do is my split view is pane open equals not my split view dot is pane open like so and remember we talked about how that would show and hide uh, the split views um, pane let's run it and see what happens now all right not exactly what we had in mind i think i see the error of my ways here I forgot one crucial little thing here, and that is we need to go split view dot pane and wrap that around our list box because it's sitting outside of the pane right now. Great, let's run it again. Okay, so I see that it mostly works. The hover works great. There's some margin issues here, and uh, that font is way too large, but we're very close. Tell you what, let's go ahead and modify that font size down to 24. That should help. 
And then I want to put some margin space to the left of this text block. So we'll set margin. And the reason is because it, that, uh, that second text block is bleeding too close to the first text block. So we want to set some space in there. We'll put 20 pixels to the left of both of these text blocks. Great. Now let's run it one more time. Uh, there we go. That looks nice. So then the other thing that we'll want to do now is to just create a split view. Uh, we'll set the, the split view's content. And for our purposes, I'm just going to put a text block in there. And I'm going to give it a name. Just to prove that the click actually works or that the, uh, the selection changed actually works. Furthermore, I'm going to change or add to this list box item. I'm going to give it a name. So we're going to call this first one the share list box item. And then the second one, give it a name of favorites list box item. And now in the list box selection changed event handler, what I want to do is put my mouse cursor there and hit F12. That'll open it up in the code behind. And I can do some something as simple as this. What do we name that again? Share list box index. So share is selected. Else, if favorites list box item is selected, and in each of these cases, result text block dot text equals uh, share, and then we'll do the same here. Result text block dot text equals, and here's where you'd probably want to do what we talked about earlier with navigation and load in. Uh, another page into a frame and that frame would sit in the middle where we currently have the content area okay and that's what something that you're going to actually need to do for the next uh, challenge all right so let's see what we have here all right so you can see that when we select either the buttons it changes the selected item and I can each even select and then go away and it still selected it okay because we have overlay and not in line all right all right so hopefully that all made sense uh, you're gonna need this skill this poor man's hamburger navigation layout uh, for our upcoming challenge and as we uh, as we move along like I said before okay so I think we're just about ready to get started with that uh, after a quick review we'll get started with that with that challenge and we'll see you there thanks